Hello and welcome to another adventure here on my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the palettes that got away, those limited edition palettes that I wanted when they came out, talked myself out of them for some reason, but still wistfully look back and go, yeah, I wish I woulda. So if you like playing with makeup and talking about the beauty community slash industry just as much as I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll be notified of all future content I post on Tuesdays and Fridays and try to do bonus content whenever I can. Well, except this week. This week I posted literally every day except Tuesday and Friday, but things are weird. So, so like I said, these are the palettes that I just wistfully look back when I'm reminded of them or I think of them once in a while and just go, yeah, I wish I woulda. So if you have these palettes in your collection, make sure you bring them out and give them some love for me. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. We're gonna start with the palette that inspired this video idea, which is the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. Now, I have no idea why I wanted this palette so bad. This was literally when I got into makeup, I was looking on ColourPop. I was looking and I was like, ooh, I want that palette. And I couldn't have told you why. I still am not sure what attracts me so much to this palette. And for some reason, I just kept feeling like, someday I will buy you. Someday it will be the day and I will wake up and be like, yes, now is the time to buy that palette. And that day actually came and I was excited and I was like, yes, I'm going to finally buy the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. I went to ColourPop and it was sold out. So I put in my email to be notified of when it would be back in stock and it has never come back in stock and is no longer on the ColourPop website, which tells me it's been discontinued and that sucks because it's, it's the one that got away. Even though all of these, the whole premise of this is these are the ones that got away, but out of all of them, I think if I could have one, I don't know, I'll save the if I could pick one of these and get it to the end because I'm talking about this one now, but maybe after talking about the other ones, one of them will win. But I just, I like this palette. It's a pretty neutral palette. It has a nice pop of yellow. Like I have all these shades. I know I have all these shades and I actually enjoy mattes a lot more than I enjoy shimmers. And this is a shimmer heavy palette, but for some reason, I've just never gotten over this palette and always wish I would have tried it. Cause I just feel like this would have been my ColourPop holy grail, and I have no idea why. So the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette, I think I would have loved you. Next, we're gonna talk about the other ColourPop palette on this list, and that is the ColourPop Fame palette. Now, I think these came out either last summer or the summer before. It was like Fame and Fortune, and Fame was the cool toned one, and Fortune was the warm toned one, and I love cool tones. Cool tones are my jam. I was so excited that ColourPop was coming out with a cool toned palette, but because cool tones are my jam, I have some cool toned palettes in my collection that I really love. So I talked myself out of buying this palette, but my love for it has been renewed because I've been watching some older Jen Phelps videos here on YouTube and she loves this palette. And I think it looks so much prettier in video and just shown on YouTube rather than in the promotional pictures. I think the promotional pictures kind of flattened it a little bit and it didn't look as exciting. So I think if at the time I had seen it actually like in a video and watched a YouTube video with it, then I think I might've gone ahead and purchased it because it is such a beautiful, cool toned palette, but I didn't and again, it was discontinued. I think it was limited edition, like actual limited edition, not just color pop everything being limited edition, so can't get it anymore. It does really remind me of the Naked 2, which I do own. It's just this one has a lot more of the matte cool tone shades that I love rather than the shimmers, but I do love my Naked 2, so I guess even though there is that part of me that goes, man, I wish I had the Fame palette, I guess it's fine. <laughs> and now moving into a more high-end palette. I do have three drugstore and three high-end in this video. So a high-end palette that I wanted and got away is the Kylie Naughty palette. Now between the Naughty palette and the Nice palette, I know everyone went crazy over the Nice palette and she actually still makes the Nice palette just in different packaging. I actually really liked the Naughty palette's color story better. I just found it more interesting, more unique. There were those like grays and that green and it just looked like such a beautiful palette. But at the time I just, 
I think I just didn't have the money to spend on a high-end eyeshadow palette or maybe it was that there was just a different high-end palette I wanted more and I've always kind of felt just like in the back of my head like I liked that. I, I wish I would have tried it, but recently I got the C Color the Frost palette, which is a dupe of the Nice palette, and I have been adoring this. This isn't even the newest palette in my collection anymore, and I still have to convince myself to reach for anything else. I've been loving this so, so much. So with my renewed interest in or with my new interest, it wasn't really renewed because I wasn't interested in the Nice palette, but with my interest in the Frost, which is a dupe of the Nice palette, it makes me think, wow, if I loved the one I wasn't so attracted to so much, how much would I have loved the one I actually wanted between the two? But I don't think I would actually want this in the Kylie formula, which sounds crazy because I know the Kylie Summer palette, I've said that this is my favorite eyeshadow formula since I got it. And I've had this a little bit over a year, so this winter I kind of put it away. It's more of a, you know, it's the summer palette. These warm tones are good for fall, but I just wasn't feeling it this winter. And a couple days ago I got it out and was highly, highly disappointed. This has really started to go bad, even though I haven't even had it two years yet. Like I've had it a little over a year. I got this around Christmas 2018, so I, like, it's okay now. It's okay, but it was so, so freaking good that going from my favorite eyeshadow formula to it's okay, but a li little tricky to work with, it makes me so sad and so disappointed that I, I don't know if I want to even try more Kylie palettes because I'm just, I feel betrayed. Like, you can see this palette has been loved, especially the shade Aquaholic. Freaking stunning. It is the perfect just throw all over the lid put on some mascara inner corner highlight be done type of shade i i love this shade but they're just not as pigmented anymore and a little tricky to blend and this palette used to blend like it could read my mind i i'm not really feeling too willing to try Kylie palettes at the moment because this was an expensive palette and it didn't even last two years and I have other palettes of similar price points that I've had way longer that still work perfectly so I don't think I would actually want the Kylie Naughty palette. What I would want is is like C Color to come out with a dupe palette of this. Like I would love if I could have like the set of the Frost and I don't know the Freeze whatever they would call it. That's what I want. So I'm sad I didn't get to try this color story, but I don't feel that sad that I missed out on the formula because I'm, I'm bitter. But there is another Kylie palette which made this list, and that is the Eye of the Storm palette. So when Kylie came out with her Stormy collection, it had two palettes, the Eye of the Storm and the Calm Before the Storm, and at the time, I wasn't interested in either of them. I thought both of them were ugly. I did not understand the hype. Like I got, they were named after her daughter and that was kind of cute. I, I got the emotional reason people would want them, but I didn't understand why people would want the color stories. But since then I was reminded of them when Rimmel came out with their Thunderstorm eyeshadow palette that was a dupe of this palette. And I went, oh, that's actually interesting. I'm starting to see the looks I could do because when these palettes came out, it was really early on in me being interested in and learning about makeup. So I looked at this Eye of the Storm palette at the time and just went, I don't know what I would do with that. But now that I'm a little more adventurous in my makeup and I have improved skill wise, I am interested in this palette. It's a different color story. It's unique and interesting. And I can really think of a lot of pretty looks looking at this palette that I wouldn't have thought of or known how to do when I was starting in makeup. And I know I can get a dupe of this with the Rimmel one, but I've just never tried the Rimmel eyeshadows and I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. So with that palette, I kind of feel like it's one of those eventually. Like one day I will wake up and be like, today is the day I am trying that Rimmel palette, but that day has not yet come. So if I was going to try a Rimmel palette, it would probably be the Thunderstorm one, the dupe of this one, because now I am interested in the color story, but I just, I'm hesitant on the formula and I, I think I'd be hesitant about the Kylie formula too, now that I know what happened to my summer palette. Still bitter, still bitter. I know it's been like, what, 
40 seconds since I last said I was bitter about it, but nothing has changed in those 40 seconds. And now moving back to drugstore, the next palette that got away is the BH Cosmetics Royal Affair palette. Now, when I saw this palette, I was like, oh, you made a palette for me. You just went, what would Joe like? and put it into a palette. Even my roommate who was going to school to be a makeup artist and we would geek about makeup when he saw it, he was like, so are you getting the BH Royal Affair palette? Cause it is a hundred percent you. It is those smoky, cool toned, grungy neutrals with a couple pops and oh my gosh, those shimmers, those mattes. It just, like I said, it looks like it was made for me, it is so, so beautiful. And I've been wanting to try BH Cosmetics because I've heard a lot of great reviews about their eyeshadow formula and I had just kind of been waiting for the palette and then the palette came and for some reason I didn't buy it. And I keep looking to try a BH palette, like I keep waiting for them to come out with another color story that speaks to me. And there's a few that have gotten close, like the Love in London palette or the Smitten in Switzerland palette. Like I've been interested, but then when I compare them in my head to the Royal Affair, I'm like, I wish I just would have gotten the Royal Affair palette. I think I actually chose this one over it. Like I had some Christmas money. I'm trying to remember exactly why I didn't buy the BH one. And I think it's because I decided to get this Kylie one over it. And I don't regret that decision because this has been like a treasure in my makeup collection for so long. And I've talked about it as such on my channel. And that's why I'm so, so freaking upset about this going bad. But I think that was it. I think I had a choice between do I get the BH palette that is like new and I thought maybe the shiny newness of it was making me want it so much rather than the Kylie palette that I had wanted for basically six months. And I think I chose the Kylie palette. I really think that's why thinking back, I didn't get this. And like I said, I don't regret that decision, but I wish I would have gotten this. I wish it had stayed on the market long enough for me to pick it up. And then the final palette on this list is the Urban Decay Back Talk palette. And I remember exactly why I didn't get this palette and it was straight up, I could not afford it. I remember it got like mixed to negative reviews on YouTube. And I used that to sort of justify to myself like, oh, you wouldn't have liked it anyway, but oh my gosh, this palette was so beautiful. I loved the detachable mirror thing. I loved how it had blushes and eyeshadows and it was this monochromatic pink, moment of a palette. And I had nothing like that in my collection. I still really don't have anything like this in my collection. And I know you could be like, well, if you want a pink monochromatic Urban Decay palette, why don't you get either the Naked 3 or the Naked Cherry? And it's because the Naked 3 is too light and neutral and the Naked Cherry is too intense. So the Back Talk palette really was like the middle ground between the Naked 3 and the Naked Cherry, and ah, oh, it's so beautiful. So with this palette, I was glad it was getting like mixed to negative reviews on YouTube because if everyone was like, oh my gosh, this is such a good freaking palette, and I already wanted it so bad and couldn't afford it that it just would have been like salt in the wound of just me being a broke ass college student who loved makeup. So I'm kind of glad this wasn't that good, but I still wish I would have tried it out. I still think I would have really loved it because I really loved the tones in it and I just felt so protective of it. I was like, if I had it, I would love it. It, it was so ridiculous, but I do still sometimes think back and think, man, I really did want the Back Talk palette. So those are the six palettes that got away and looking at all of them and after talking about all of them, if I could just choose one to appear in my collection right now, hmm. I know which ones I can mark off as no, and that's the ColourPop Fame, the Kylie Naughty, and the Kylie Eye of the Storm. So the top three that are really hard for me to choose between are the Royal Affair, the I Think I Love You, and the Back Talk Palette. And between those, I think think I can mark off the Royal Affair. With the BH, I'm kind of thinking of like, well, Smitten in Switzerland looks like a really nice palette, so maybe you could try BH. Actually, that's really just making me want the Smitten in Switzerland more, so I'll have to take another look at that palette. Not that I'm really buying any makeup right now. But between the two, okay, I think the reason Urban Decay Back Talk is 
pulling my heart is because I do feel a little defensive of it. I do feel like I would have loved it, even though no one else did, I would have loved it. So if I let go of that feeling of like, I wanna try it and just tell everyone they were wrong, if I let go of that feeling, I think the palette that I would choose is the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. And the thing is, I honestly don't know how much I would use it. I don't know if I would declutter it in like six months or whatever, but it is the one that I think because I've wanted it just so long in my makeup journey, I think it was like the second palette I ever wanted and I never got it. It really does feel like the one that got away to me. So I'm gonna say that right now, I think if I could just magically wave a wand and make one of these palettes appear in my hands, I would go with the ColourPop I Think I Love You palette. Though Urban Decay Back Talk is a close second. So let me know down in the comments for you, what are the palettes that got away? What is your top, like if you can wave a magic wand and just have any discontinued palette appear brand new in your collection, what would it be? Let me know down in the comments. Again, thank you so, so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time.